afternoon, ladies and gents. Simon Brown here for today's webinar. So today we're looking at managing risk. A couple of points before we delve into the webinar. There is certainly uh, lots of time for questions. We'll take a lot of questions at the end. I'm not in any mad rush, so let's see how it goes. But a couple of points. Firstly, risk perhaps is the most important part of trading or, or getting it right. We talk about discipline being critical. Absolutely it is. But discipline to what? That, that's the point. One of the things we need to be disciplined towards is fundamentally is risk. If we if we get our risk right, then we're probably halfway home. Now, even if we're not getting the best trades, we're going to minimize losses and let our winners go. And, and that's broadly what trading really needs to be about. So it's about getting that risk and working that risk properly. We're talking today about the 2% rule. I'm a stress, and I'm going to come back to this point, but I'm going to start it right up front. I'm not, it's not a 2% stop loss. No. 2% rule is how much of your portfolio is at risk in any one trade. But first, let's step back, of course. Uh, stop losses. What are we looking at? Five potential outcomes in a trade. Many of you have seen this uh, graph graphic many, many times. Uh, small profit, small loss, a break even, a big profit, a big loss. We need to make sure we don't get those big losses. Those big losses are ultimately what wipe us out. And every trader has them. And I think the, you know, once we can eliminate big losses from our trading, we leap forward. We absolutely do. We, uh, we've all been there. Some of us might still be there where your trading's going okay. You're making money, and then you have a big loss. You take a speculative position, or you miss an exit, whatever the case may be, and suddenly a big loss, and it charms back all the profits, because in truth, the big profits are few and far between. So we need to make the big losses at zero, and then the big profits, as they come every so often, really kick in. And it's about stop loss. Without a stop loss, it is game over. I can't stress that enough. We have to have a stop loss, a point at which we say, no more, we will not take any more pain. Why? That Know the risk. In other words, what is your risk? Rands and cents. Be comfortable with it. Know that if you lose this amount of money, it's not going to be the end of the world. Johnny still goes to school next year. You can still have a Christmas Day uh, a turkey, whatever the case may be. Know that risk, accept it, and then it's about managing it. And the actual process of managing stop losses and where to place them, massively difficult. And We've got webinars on that. And if you go and Google, if you go and check stop loss on the justonelap.com website, we have got content there. Certainly, the process of managing and placing stop loss is is the problem. Is it's not a science, so it's fraught with emotional pain, and that hurts us. So we ignore stop losses. We ignore them because we are afraid. We hate being wrong, and we can't afford the loss. We're afraid when well, that fills into the hate being wrong and can't afford the loss and afraid of being looking like a fool, afraid of getting stopped out and watching the stock go to the moon without us. Well, here's the real bad news. That, unfortunately, is a part of trading. That's just going to happen. It's going to happen more times than you can imagine. Um, being wrong, ignoring a stop loss, that's being wrong. Actioning a stop loss, that is not being wrong. That is being right. And if we can't afford the loss, simply we shouldn't have been in the trade in the first place. But to the previous sliders, know that loss. Know what that risk is so that we know that we can take that hit and move on. So how do we do it? Well, we determine stop losses before we enter the trade. Our system, our trading system, will have a, a stop loss associated with it, a methodology, lower lows, moving averages, trailing percentages, whatever they might be, we need to know what that methodology is. And then before we enter the trade, we need to make sure we know exactly where that stop loss is for this individual trade. And then you've got to work out how bad the loss is going to potentially be in rands and be comfortable with it. Trading is not about rands and cents at its core. It's about entry. It's about costs. It's about all those little bits and pieces. But in truth, we're humans. What are we going to do? We're going to look at a trade. Did we make money? On Friday night when we're having a, a coffee or a bottle of wine with our friends and they say, how was your week's trading? What's your brain going to go to? Did I make money in that trade or didn't I? So 
that's the wrong response, and that's what we're dealing with in our in our webinar in uh, two weeks' time on the 11th of December. You know, perfect trading is not about profit or loss, but if we're not comfortable with that potential rand loss, when that stop loss triggers, we're not going to be able to do the right thing. The right thing, exit, get the heck out. Trade is going against you. So onto the two percent rule. What are we looking at at the two percent rule? You only risk two percent of your capital in any one trade. So if your capital is 100,000 Rand, you risk 2,000 Rand. It protects you from a run of losing trades. The point is, we're going to have runs of losing trades. We're going to have periods where, well, things just aren't going right. At, at the moment, my, my lazy system's on a, on a winning streak. I forget the exact number, but it's six, seven, maybe eight winning trades in a row. What does that tell me? I've got a, a run of losing trades. It's just, you know, mathematically, that system probably gives about a 52% positive return. So 48% of the time it loses money. So if I go much above the 52, I know it's going to come back to normality. So it protects you from that run of losing trade. It also stops you having the big losers. That's the point. It also reduces the stress of a losing trade. And what I mean by reducing the stress, quite simply, because you're comfortable, because you're saying, hey, you know what? I just risked 2% of my portfolio. I could have made an extra 3, 4, 5, I don't know, 10% on my portfolio. I didn't, but I only risked 2%. It puts me in the comfort zone. When I get into a trade, it goes horribly wrong. I'm going to lose 2%. You know what? That is not a train smash. So let's say you've got a 50,000 Rand portfolio, and I'm going to run with 50,000. We'll talk about portfolio levels a little bit later in the webcast. Risk per trade is 1,000 Rand. 1,000 Rand is 2% of 50,000 Rand. That is how much you can afford to lose in any one trade. You then have 50 losing trades in a row, and you're at zero. In truth, not because as you're losing, your portfolio would be going down, but in a, in a, in a linear world, which we don't live in, but in a linear world, if you're only risking 1,000 Rand in a trade, you need 50 to go bust. 50 losing trades in a row. You're looking at the chart upside down. You have a 100,000 Rand portfolio, risk per trade, 2%, 2,000 Rand. Again, 50 trades to get to zero. Likelihood of 50 losing trades in a row, assuming discipline and system, frankly, 50 losers in a row, likelihood of that is zero. So how do we... Practically crunch the numbers and work it out. Say we're buying a share, 10 Rand. We, we get a buy signal on the share, 10 Rand is our entry. We say, well, okay, what's the next point? What's our stop loss? We bring our stop loss methodology, whatever it might be, and we say, well, our stop loss is 9 Rand. So risk per share is 1 Rand. We would be a buyer at 10. If we got stopped out, we would get stopped at 9 and we would lose one rand per share that we purchased, risk per share. We divide, sorry, we get that 2% of our portfolio. We've got a 50,000 rand portfolio, 2% is 1,000 rand. We buy 1,000 shares. How do we get to that 1,000 shares? We take our one rand and we divide it into our 1,000. And that gives us 1,000 shares to buy. And it's as simple as that. So we start at the top. Entry price. Stop loss. The difference between those two is my risk per share. We divide that into 2% of my portfolio, and that tells me how many shares to buy. So we get in. We buy 1,000 shares. Costs us 10,000 Rand. We get stopped at 9 Rand a share. We get back 9,000 Rand. We have lost 1,000 Rand or 2% of the portfolio. Now, one of the issues that people are going to be saying is, well, heck, you know, how am I going to make real money if I'm only risking 2%? In truth, it's about protecting the downside. The first part of being trader is keep your capital safe. When the capital is safe, then we can go and grow it. So yes, if this is a great trade and it goes to 15 Rand a share, yeah, you're going to make 5,000 Rand. Heck, that's 10% on your portfolio in one, one trade. That is massive. 
So another example, I want to run through a couple of these. Again, you're entering the same share at 10 Rand, but your stop loss comes in at 9 Rand 50. Risk per share, 50 cents. That is your 10 Rand less your 9 Rand 50 gives you 50 cents to there. Next point, 2% of your portfolio, 1,000 Rand. How many shares do you buy? In this case, you buy 2,000 shares. Your 50 cents into 1,000 Rand gives you 2,000 shares to buy. So this time you go and spend 20,000 Rand on the trade. And yes, if it moves to 15 Rand, you're going to make yourself 10 instead of 5. But your risk remained the same. When I started trading, I used to buy in quantities of 10,000. Didn't matter what I was buying. I always bought 10,000. Whether I was buying a 20 cent warrant or a 90 cent warrant. My risk was all over the place. My reward, my profit was all over the place. There wasn't just a lack of consistency in my trading. There was a lack of consistency in my profits and my loss and my drawdown. There was just no consistency anyway. Here, I've got consistency. Every time I enter a trade, at risk, 1,000 Rand. Nice and simple. Example three, same share, 10 Rand, but this time your stop loss came in at 9 Rand 80. This gives you 20 cents risk per share. It's a crazy tight stop loss, but maybe you're doing a, 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 a trade-off support and you can really put it incredibly tight. Your portfolio is still 50,000 Rand, still 1,000 Rand at risk per trade, that being your 2%. Number of shares to buy would be 5,000. In this example, you're actually going to be fully invested. You're going to buy 5,000 shares at 10 bucks a pop. You're going to put 50,000 Rand into the trade. It seems crazy. You're 100% in the trade. But your risk remains 1,000 Rand. That's the critical part. So your potential reward is potentially higher because of the tight to stop loss. So the immediate thing we think here is, haha, I know, tight stop loss. No. Your stop loss and your methodology around your stop loss has to be a part of your system, not a part of your profit or anything like that. The system will give you a buy signal. It will tell you how to position the stop loss, and it might then pop out at 9 Rand 80. I did a, a trade on Aussie Futures a, while, a couple of months ago. It ended up being a giant position because the way, the, tr the way I trade, I use in that particular system, my 15 EMA is my stop loss. It's also my entry trigger. And from entry to stop loss was very, very small. I think it was like 200 odd points or something like that. Usually it's closer to five, six, seven or 800 points. So I had a small stop loss in terms of points. It meant I had a much larger position. I went and got a lot more contracts. At other times, my stop loss is far away and I get into a much smaller position. And folks are then saying, well, you're messing with your profit side. Yes, but you're messing with your profit side to preserve your downside. Well worth the risk. Obviously, if you're trading derivatives, CFDs, single stock futures still applies. In essence, your values quantities, you work it out on the underlying share, asset, whatever it is you're trading. And if it comes out and says, go and buy 200 Anglos, well, you would buy 200 Anglo CFDs or if you're trading single stock futures, to Anglo single stock future contracts, because they are 100 shares per contract. So your risk is exactly the same, and the process is exactly the same. So we get that buy signal, determine your stop loss level as per system methodology, get to your RANDs at risk per trade, or cents, from that you determine your quantity. And you enter the trade and you adjust your stop loss. And of course, as your trade goes in your favor, you're likely to move that stop loss up behind you. And as you do that, well, then you're going to start moving into a situation where you started with 1,000 Rand at risk, but now you're perhaps only 500 Rand at risk, 200 Rand. Then you're at break even. And then, in fact, your stop loss is in profit. Problems with the system? Short answer, there aren't any. So the slide is blank. Um, th there is one potential problem, and I'll touch on it in a slide or two. Another potential problem is, is 2% perhaps too big a number? 
Some of you are thinking, oh, let's run it to 4 or 5%. Yeah, you run it to 5%. You have 10 losing trades in a row, which is very possible, and suddenly you've lost half your portfolio. If anything, 2% might be high. My lazy Aussie, I'm running 1%. Gary Stone is a mechanical trader who's done a ton of research in the U.S. markets. He says your sweet spot is 0.8%. So if anything, take that 2% number and try and reduce it, I wouldn't rise it. I wouldn't push it higher. If you push it higher, you're frankly significantly changing the risk within your system and the risk to going bust, not the risk of making a large amount of money. Portfolio size, that's one of the issues. Small portfolio, if you've got a 10,000 Rand portfolio, 2%, 200 Rand, frankly, it doesn't work. So, I mean, what do you do with a 10,000 Rand portfolio? Well, you save until you've got a bigger portfolio. Ideal portfolio, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000, probably get away with 50. You can probably get away with 25 or 30,000 in a trading portfolio. And here's the other side of the coin. You know, Alexander Elder, and I'm not a massive fan of, of Alexander Elder um, or his books. I think he tries to sell us blue skies far too much. Alexander Elder talks about the, if your portfolio is too small, it's like flying a small light airplane at treetop level. One little thing goes wrong, one burst of wind or uh, bird strike or tree taller than the others, you're a ball of flame. As that portfolio gets bigger, your plane gets bigger, your altitude gets higher. Net result, you get further and further ahead of the curve, you can take more drawdown. But here's the other side of the equation. How do we best learn? We learn via webcasts, we learn from courses, we learn from reading, we learn from paper trading, but we learn best from doing. So if you're sitting there with a 10,000 Rand portfolio and you say, well, in a year's time I'll have 30,000 and I'll do that, is there something to be said for trading 10,000 Rand so that you can learn? Short answer is maybe yes, but I do think you're going to bust out. Is that part of learning? Sure, it is. Going for me and for most traders I know, if they haven't bust out, they've come incredibly close. I, I bust out three times in the 90s. So decent size is good, but there's issues here. So let's do a quick recap. No stop loss, quite simply, you go bust. It is as simple as that. Be comfortable with your rand at risk. In other words, if you're entering X amount and you get stopped, what is your RAND value? In the big picture, it makes no difference, but it makes a difference emotionally when it triggers. That's why it's important. Determine the stop loss level, then use your 2% rule, then work out the quantity you will buy. And it might come out to strange quantities. I sometimes have to go and buy you know, 2,764 of whatever it might be. And with Aussie futures, you sometimes have to buy 3.6 contracts. So you can play with that because you can do three Aussie and six Aussie. So you can actually get the 0.6. And then make sure those rands at risk don't scare. I'm coming back to that point because it is so critically important. The rands at risk cannot scare you. You need to know what they are. What happens when we enter a trade? Optimism bias. This is going to be a winning trade. We are going to make a fortune. So what do we do? We don't even look at the downside. We don't for a moment consider that this trade could cost us money. Instead, we focus purely on the upside. Ladies and gents, if you've got questions, pop them into the, the Q&A box, particularly around the, the process of, of the determining that 2%. That, that it is critically important that we that we understand it, that it makes sense. Um, if need be, I can I can run some more examples there, uh, and we can certainly run through that. That's the key component of it. A um, couple of questions coming through around what happens if you've got multiple trades. They each go 2%. So you absolutely, if you've got you know your first trade, your second, your third, your fourth, they all go 2%. And then the question is, how do you value the portfolio, Shabir is asking about, you know, what about, so you've got a 50,000 Rand portfolio, 
but it's 40,000 cash and you've got a position that is open in the market. Shabir, I value that position at its current mark to market, i.e. what can I sell it for at this moment? And I add it to the system. Gerard, you're asking, what if we have four positions at once, risk is in 8%, that's still fine. Gerard, it's a great question and, and, and there's, there's two answers to it. Short answer, yeah. So we, we have, we have, we've got a lot more risk. I suppose the point being is, is, is how much are those risks going to be very similar to each other? You know, if you've got four gold mines at the same time, you really are in a risk position. But yes, we're at overall market. I'm comfortable with that. Um, Alexander Elder talks about the 6% rule, where he says you'd never have more than 6% of your portfolio at risk at any one point. And therefore, after you've got three positions in the market, you're now at 6%, you simply stop entering new positions until those stop losses start moving higher. And then you get a stop loss, which is perhaps only 1% at risk, or stop loss that's at break even, and now you can boot that out. A question also came in from Shabir around uh, activating with um, what do you do with your open positions. So if you've got a 50,000 Rand portfolio and it's all cash, easy enough. If you've got a 50,000 Rand portfolio and it's 40,000 Rand cash and then an open position in the market, I then value that open position at the current level I could exit at, my mark to market. So what price could I sell at? And I then add that into the portfolio. So let's say if you were to exit the, the, the position you're in right now at, uh, 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 say, 12,000, add that to your 40,000, your portfolio is 52. Uh, some folks coming back with Gerard's question around the 8%. Is that partly why I reduce my risk? Yes, it is. So that's partly why I run at 1% risk. So you know, I'm, I, I, the way I trade, I'm never going, the most trades I might have in the market at any one time is five, which means at worst I've got 5% risk in the market. Uh, Fumani, what side, what, at what point do I take profit? How do you decide to take profit? Uh, Fumani, that would be part of your, your, your system overall. It absolutely would. Typically, I let the market take me out. In other words, I don't take profit at targets. And I tell you why, because the market typically goes a heck lot further than you would ever imagine. So on most of my systems these days, I'm using an exponential moving average, which is, is not the, the most intuitive in the world. Um, so what I'm using is, is lower lows. If you go and check on just one lap, there are some videos around the practicality of stop losses. And if my internet comes back, I can probably resolve that issue. Um, how do I use 2% in, in, in warrants? It's a good question, Lamek, and what I would do is I would use the entry price in the warrant. So you're buying the warrant at uh, 40 cents, you get stopped out at 30 cents. So, no, that's crazy. You get stopped out at 35 cents would be your stop loss. You would be using your pricing matrix to tell you where your stop loss is. That gives you 5 cents risk per warrant. You've got 1,000 Rand that you can spend. You go and buy yourself 20,000 of those warrants at 80 cents each. So it's still applicable there. And that's part of the point. It, it, it's ultimately applicable across all asset classes, regardless what assets you're trading, what asset classes you've got. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any questions coming through. Uh, last question, will this video be online? It will um, probably, certainly by the time, by bedtime this evening, it will certainly be online. I've got some activities this afternoon and stuff, but I'll start working on it. I'll do it before bedtime. So let's say before midnight, it'll be online. So tomorrow morning, at least, if not earlier, we will, of course, email and tweet and Facebook and everything else when it goes out. Ladies and gents, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, thank you very much for your time this afternoon, uh, and we will see you again. I'm, I'm encouraging everyone to come to our webcast on 11 December, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Let's make 2014 a year of perfect trading. I've got a bunch of ideas around that. I've got some ideas how we can kind of egg each other on to make it happen and almost use, use, use social pressure in a sense. So if you're free, uh, register for that. Of course, there will be a video. Of course, that video will be available. Thanks all. Cheers. This webinar was proudly brought to you by IG South Africa. Visit igmarkets.co.za to open your trading account today.